Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. I am Sean Anderson, Most Valuable Podcast, and the upcoming segment is from our full Fast Break podcast that we recorded. And if you do want to check out that full podcast, head over to Blog Talk Radio slash The Fast Break. You'll be able to find the full podcast over there. This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. This is the Fast Break Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Anderson. I'm joined, as always, by Ricky Widmer. What's up, what's up, guys? And Dave Oster. What's up, everybody? And today on the Fast Break Podcast, we are talking about the Golden State Warriors, the Chicago Bulls for you two. Woo! And we're also talking about my favorite team, the Sacramento Kings. And uh, weirdly enough, I'm not hating the DeMarcus Cousins trade. So uh, that'll be an Weird. interesting conversation when we get to that. But let's jump in right away. Why, why waste any time? Why waste any time, guys? Let's jump into the Golden State Warriors. They've won 10 straight. They started a little bit rough after KD went down, but now they are finding their groove back to where they were last year. 10 straight games. What has been the key to the Warriors winning 10 straight without KD? What has it been? Has it been Steph? Has it been Clay? Has it just been the team kind of coming around? What is? What have you seen from the Golden State Warriors the past 10 games? I'm going to lean on Steph. I think that's what it is. Because like the last few games, I'm even just going to go like Rockets, Spurs, and then Rockets. Even if you like, just if all you caught was mm-hmm. the highlights... You're looking at going, that looks like Steph. It looks like Steph. The team is gelling because of it. Because at the beginning of the year, what kind of we expected happened. You add a new superstar to the team. Roles have to be kind of not reissued, but it's going to be different when you add someone like Kevin Durant onto this Warrior team. And this is it where it's like, okay, we don't need Kevin Durant. Not that they have said, like, oh, we need Kevin Durant. But it's one of those things where maybe it's allowed this team to kind of go loosey-goosey now. And now, like, Steph Curry, there was that one shot he had. I want to say it was over the Rockets. He hit it, and he just starts pounding the arm. And it's like, that is Steph Curry. This Warrior team is back. You got to love when he starts dropping the fuck you threes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's just an attitude thing, and it gets the whole team going. Uh, a, a couple points I want to touch on here. Um, from watching their last 10 games, the, the biggest things I've seen is the Warriors kind of returning to the old Warriors. Um, one of the things that they do better than anyone is abuse people off of Steph in the pick and roll. He's just so quick. He's, he's able to get to the basket extremely smooth, uh, and he can dish out and creates better looks for everybody. It's something that they didn't do a lot with KD on the floor mm-hmm. um, for one reason or the other. I hope that they continue doing it with him because – Watch him doing it. Uh, we watched David West look like a stud playing against the Spurs. Um, the other thing that I've seen them do is bring up Andre Guadalla, and he's kind of reemerged himself. He's one of those guys who doesn't usually hit the stat line very hard, but his impact is there. And a lot of the, I know that a lot of the Warrior fans are like, no, you know, impact wise, he's still a six man of the year. His stat line just doesn't show it. He's been coming up big. He's been putting up in his in the last ten. He's been putting up twelve, uh, four and three. Almost to four and four. He's been huge for them. Yeah, and one thing too, you kind of you've seen with the Golden State Warriors is they they have gone on a couple of runs and one of the bigger runs that you have seen was in January as well. Outside of the one that they're currently on, mm-hmm. uh, January they only lost two games and those were two close games. They lost to Memphis in overtime and then by Miami by three. And and there Steph was really emerging. He, I think he put up twenty seven in that month. Is Steph the key for them to win the NBA Finals? Because we obviously know when KD comes back, this is this is this is one of the greatest teams we've seen on paper. But do you think Steph is still the key for the Warriors to win our game, or is it all four of them coming together? I think Steph's the key, and the reason why is you have to have your leader be there for you to win. When the Bulls won in the 90s, we talk about Jordan. When the Cavs won last year, we talk about LeBron. When the Spurs won it, we talk about, well, it was Kawhi's big performance, but who was the big leader of that? was Timmy D, the big fundamental. That big leader needs to be there and be the guy that the team can lean on. And then the rest of the pieces, the rest of the army, have to be in place, ready to go, and doing their role if this team wants to win a championship. But this is a team where they've got so much star power, you don't have to like worry that they're not going to win it. I think that they played it a little too nice for KD to start the season. Like They, they kind of let him play his own game. And you heard with some of the early comments when he's talked about, oh, I never knew like offensive sets could be run this way. It's weird playing in a system. And I feel like they catered their game too much to him, and they weren't really the Warriors that we mm-hmm. knew. Um, with him being out, 
we've seen them kind of turn back the clock a little bit and start to look like that, like you said, a little bit looser of a team. The ball moves a whole lot better when he's not there. It's not a knock on him. It's just I feel like they changed who they were for him. And I hope when he comes back, they're going to continue with the momentum they're with and don't force this ball through Kevin Durant when he comes back. Let him be part of the team. And I, I do agree that Steph needs to continue to be that leader. Um I think it's I think it's more so how they play as a team. Yeah. Well, and if you look at the the past ten games for the big three, Draymond, Clay, and Steph, Steph averaging twenty five point five points per game, seven uh, uh, about pretty much eight assists per game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Clay averaging twenty four points per game, and then you look at Draymond, he's averaging ten points per game. I think seven rebounds per game and about six assists per game. So they're pretty much going back to where they were last year. Uh, a little bit uh, slip, I think, on Draymond point wise, and, and still with uh, uh, Steph too. Yeah. Uh, the points aren't there, but they're still performing. Uh, Pretty pretty highly. I think uh, Steph's shooting around forty seven percent. So when you say when KD comes back, they don't need to cater to him. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you how how do you think he fits into that then? Because watching them now, how Steph, Clay, and Draymond are working, where do you think KD's role on the offense will be when he comes back? I uh, hopefully he won't be the ball dominant guy he was when we watch him start the season. What he's been his entire career. I want to see him more. I don't want to say like glorified spot up shooter Kevin Love style, but I think that he needs to become much more of a moving piece in the system rather than come down the court, give me the ball, and let me play ISO because mm-hmm. that's not who the Warriors are. That's not mm-hmm. how they win games. They win games with the ball in Steph's hand, him creating and making opportunities for everybody else because there's no way if you have Clay on the outside and KD on the outside moving around, creating bad matchups for each other, like. There's no way this team is not going to score over 100, 110, no problem. And Ricky, with that, say they, they do go into where he's more of a moving piece. And, and we see a ton with, with Steph. He he likes the, uh, I, forget, I forget what the play's called, but you know they set a pick for him here. Mm-hmm. He goes back, and then they set another pick. He comes out. Yeah, and the, the, do and you he think just pops should, it. Yeah, do you think they should do that uh, with KD more? Put him in that set, have, have Steph bring well, the ball up, and have him be more of a spot-up shooter? Or do you think they should still give KD the ball because he's still KD? The I mean, one yeah. thing I am thinking... Thinking, and of course, this is within a game. I mean, Steph Curry is not going to play every single minute of every single game. Yep. I think what they need to do is because they have now Curry and Durant who can be ball handlers. If Curry ever needs to, I'm not going to say hit the bench, but if he needs to get a rest, okay, we're going to give him a couple minutes here. That's when you really need Durant out there because then Durant can be the ball handler and you don't have to worry about like last year in the playoffs, there was times where. If Steph Curry got into foul trouble, he had to go to the bench for some reason. The Warriors when he wasn't team, like entirely healthy. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. It was like one of those things where it's like this team doesn't have their ball handler. Well, now you have Durant to where if that situation happens, or if he just needs some rest in a game, you can have Durant out there. Then he can be the ball handler. Other than that, I I, I liked what Dave said. Kind of like a glorified Kevin Love in a sense to where because I was thinking in my head before Dave said that is. He's just going to stand there and shoot threes. That's his team. Stand there and shoot threes, and then when you get a steal, get out, move, go on the transition, and that's when we get the the behind-the-back pass from Steph to Durant for a dunk or those great transition plays from the Warriors. This is a team that likes to score, 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 and get out there and get on you, and then you have these Steph Curry fuck you threes. So with this, like we we are obviously seeing the Steph threes, and we're seeing seeing this team kind of come back to where they were last year in in, in 10 straight games. Do you think we're kind of— do you think we're blowing it out of the water though? Because I mean, this, this it wasn't like this team was never feeling it. I mean, you look at you look at the, their month by month, and at most, I think they probably yeah. only had three losses in a, in a month. Do you think we're kind of blowing it out of proportion, it's or is not, it just because KD's out? We're, we're seeing it. We're kind of putting it on, under the microscope. It's not that we're blowing it out of the water. It's just that this this season for the Warriors has been funny to me because it's not funny like oh my god they've been a worse team, but Mm -hmm. when you have what happened to you last year, you go ahead, you set the record for most wins in a season, you're up 3-1 in the finals, you go ahead and lose in Game 7, and then you have the Durant signing, which brings him to Golden State. It's kind of like this whole season has been a culture shock to me. Like we were talking before the podcast, I watched this team, and... It don't matter. I believe it was Dave that was saying, like, oh, when you get, like, teams that have been to the final so often, you see that, like, less wins over the yeah, few there's, years. Yeah, there's fatigue there. I don't think this team in that even cares about They just care. We're the one seed. We don't care how many wins it is. Then you add Kevin Durant. That's another new aspect to it. 
I just think we're acting like we are right now because this is the first time all season we have seen the Warriors. Well, this team's still going to see, I mean, 65 yeah. wins. I mean, it's not it's, like— It's but, a really good but team. But you talk about the team who set the record with well, 73, mm-hmm. and then they turn around, you add a top three player in mm-hmm. the NBA, and you're like— no, we're we're gonna be worse next year. But also, well, it's only have they been worse or have they a not been really? I mean, they haven't been. I mean, fully Steph together. Curry's had to play four quarters. Well, yeah, I think we can say that he's. I think he's playing thirty three minutes a game, and that's like I mean, that's what he used to play at like 2014, 2015 when they won the finals. Yeah. He was playing more minutes last year, so I think a they're seeing that they shouldn't be overworking their guys because they did that last year. Then they were pretty much gassed yeah. uh, when it came to the finals time. You're playing with four guys that are all superstars, so you don't need to work your guys as as hard. Mm-hmm. Do you think that we're going to see a more cohesive team in the in the finals then with with Steph? And Clay and Draymond working at, at their peak right now, the three of them together. Or do you think when Katie comes back and you throw that wrench in there, do you think that might take away from what the Warriors are currently doing? I'm not saying that Katie's making them a worse team, but do you think that it can kind of hurt the mojo? I'm going to go ahead and say this. If I, and this is what I thought about with your question, is if I'm the Warriors or if I'm a Warrior fan right now, I will take this situation of we're feeling it. And then it's like, how do we insert Kevin Durant into this now compared to your buddies on the Eastern Conference side who are like, we're not playing the best basketball. What do we do? Who do we look up to? Mm -hmm. You got a good problem. It's one of those things where this is a good problem compared to your buddies in the East, the Cavaliers, who... uh, Really are shell shocked right now. Well, let's say this: you you bring back KD, and I think it's most likely he's he's uh kind of put mm-hmm. for, towards for the playoffs. Uh, so say he comes back second round of the playoffs, they sweep for the they sweep the first round, whether it's the Trailblazers or the Nuggets, they sweep the first round. KD's back game one of uh, of uh, of series, round two. Uh, say they lose the first two games. Do you think they lose a little bit of confidence because they're like, well, hey, we just went on a spectacular run. We just swept the first round. Now we're in the second round. Whoever I don't really know who they'd play, well, it it, whether it be the and Jazz or something I mean, like actually, that. Do you they're, think they're talking about him possibly coming back for the end of the regular season? Mm-hmm. See, that's the thing. So they're, I they're would... saying they might give him time before even the playoffs. Well, hit. All right, let's just let's just say this then mm-hmm. that, that they they KD comes back, whether it's playoffs, regular season, whenever yeah. it is, they start to lose two games right when he comes oh, back. Him in? Do you think they start losing confidence because they say, "Hey, look, we just won ten straight games. We were on a roll." Us three were killing it. Not saying that they're a better team with or without KD, but maybe they are more of a team without KD. Do you think they start kind of second guessing themselves? I don't think they second guess themselves, but because of that kind of that kind of what if, that's why I'd bring him back before the regular season. Give him a game or two before well, the playoffs. Well, rush him like if it's he's a fully tr- healthy. It's a tricky situation. Yeah, if he's healthy enough, you go limited minutes. Mm-hmm. You, you work him back into the rotation. Because then, if they lose those regular season games, then it's like well, ah, mean, whatever. The regular season. To be games. fair, the end of the regular season, they yeah, got Jazz into Lakers. Like so, the last it's two nothing games, so. too hard. But even if they do lose those games, it wouldn't shell shock anything. But if you come out against the Portland Trailblazers and Dame and CJ go off for some some reason against you guys, and you lose the first two at home. It might shell shock you a little bit. However, do I see that happening? No. And even if this team did get behind the eight ball, this is a team where I feel could play themselves back into series. And it's not like, well, we're down to nothing. This one's over. I mean, they, they had a fairly easy regular season mm-hmm. into the regular season. You got Washington and Utah. Those are two tough teams right there. But then you got Minnesota, you got Phoenix, you got New Orleans and, and Los Angeles. New Orleans has been hot recently. And yeah. it'd be interesting to see. With now Anthony Davis and Demarcus Cousins doing what they're doing, uh, seeing you know, the Ricky Warriors kinda, who are, who are Ricky teased it a little bit with with the whole oh they don't play together, but you know when Steph's off the court, mm-hmm. Kevin Durant's on the court, he's leading it. Maybe they're going to run a different offense through KD than they would through Steph. Well, that could be interesting. Do you think they will do that? Let's say let's say you know they 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 will will throw out the whole. Uh, you know, confidence thing. They, they start losing games. Let's just go to the Western Conference Finals. Let's say they take on Whoa. the Spurs. All right. Well, <laughs> All right. I mean, hey, not whatever. too presumptuous. That's fair. Yeah. Well, the well, thing, Spurs are rocking. I'm not saying who who they are. The thing that I just quickly did want to mention for them, if the standings hold out like they are today, perfect for the Warriors because the Spurs, Rockets, and Thunder all on the other side wouldn't have to see any of those three teams. Until the Western Conference Finals. Yeah, but then you gotta say you, you gotta see Utah. Utah's a good I, team. I yeah. rather see Utah team. or LA over the Thunder Rockets or Spurs. That's I, fair. In the second yeah, round, I, they smoked the Thunder. I'm not too yeah, afraid of the th- Thunder. Thunder, they got their but numbers. in the playoffs, the Rockets and Spurs, I agree with. But the Thunder, I don't know if I'm afraid of. Well, the Thunder, the thunder it's that weird thing of playoff time. 
Plus Russ maybe uh, saying, I want to give it back to the old teammate. There's only so much the Terminator can do, man. Like, I still worry a little bit, even though I would pick the Warriors in that series. I, that's, I would, that's a 4 0. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a 4 At worst, it's a 4 1. But <laughs> I, it, it ain't going to be close. It ain't going to be pretty. I think, honestly, though, like going into the playoffs, I don't, I don't think the matchups matter a ton for them. Mm-hmm. It, it, it matters. Like, I, I think, Sean, when you're talking about, you know, if their confidence gets shaken or shook, like, I, I honestly, I have faith, and as much as I hate the guy, like, Draymond's the guy who's like the heart and soul of this team, and he's been out there getting. Uh, extremely in, in his own teammates' face and just trying to rile mm-hmm. the team up when things aren't going their way. So I feel like he kind of has a good pulse on it. If even if Steve Kerr and like no no discredit to Steve, he's a great coach, but like if they need to be waken woken up, like it's on Draymond, and I have faith in him doing that. Well, so he's the uh, hashtag woke master. Uh, he, he's the X factor. <laughs> well, I, I, I want to I will get back to the playoff thing, but with a guy like Draymond, do you think? Um, do you think there's it's all helping the team, or do you think that a guy like Draymond can't hurt? A team like the Warriors, well, we've because seen there's his, there's been his, too many uh, di- technical foul problems uh, hurt them last year. But so. even even do you think the intensity might be too much at some points? Because you know there, there's been they times get where away. he does. Do you think a, do you think a guy like that for any team can can hurt or help a team? Like do you think? Well, do you he's, think, a, he's a wild card. That's I, I what think, it is. I think at the end though, he's a, he's a huge net positive. Like you, you were talking about mm-hmm. um, his scoring not being great. Last, I think last night he went out there and he was like two of eleven, but he was like plus twenty something. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's it's more of what he does to the guys on the court and what he brings to you as uh, a perennial defensive player of the year candidate, as someone who can, if needed to, can take over games. But at the same time, he gives you that defensive edge that he gets under people's skin, whether he's dirty or not. Mm-hmm. I'll leave that up to the fans. He's dirty. No, I'm not. You You're going to leave it up to the fans, but then you say he's dirty. Huh? See, I'm not. I, I'm, you know, well, you are also a Draymond lover. I'm yeah. not, uh, you know, I wasn't born. Oh, I'm not going to disagree. He's a dirty player, but I still love he's the effective. guy. He's effective. I love the guy. I wasn't around when you guys were around. You know, I'm, I'm younger than you. So mm-hmm. would you say he is like the Warriors' Dennis Rodman yes. in cases, or do you would you say he's a different kind of 90s player? Well, because do you think he still has that kind of 90s aspect of I would say he's the gritty player, so he's Dennis Rodman. He's not going to be the one like Dennis who's jumping over benches, but he's Bulls never lost to Fargo, so. He's the enforcer <laughs> of the. He's the enforcer yeah. of this Warrior team. Yeah, I, kind of, I, I think honestly, like we saw, like Ron Artest was a continuation mm-hmm. of Dennis Rodman. Draymond brings you more of a across the board effect. Uh, Dennis was completely a dominant rebounder yep. and dominant defender. What Draymond can do, he can give you great floor space and he can shoot the ball. He has great uh, court vision when the ball's in his hands to distribute. Like, he's an all around really good player. But so attitude wise, he fits wise, Dennis yeah. Rodman. Yeah, if you want to pick a fight, that's the guy in the uh, Warriors who's going to do it. He'll pick a fight for you, he'll come to bat for you. And the thing that I think of with Draymond is his positives far outweigh the negatives. Because you're going to get that like last year in the finals. Now, there is, like, I look at it as like a, you know what, the NBA came in, They if Draymond's not suspended for that game, they win that series. But at the same time, you can say on the other side, well, he shouldn't have done it, shouldn't have let LeBron mm-hmm. yep. get under his skin. But with him, I think that the positives outweigh it, because not just on yeah. the floor, how he's not afraid to get in a player's face to pump them up, to get his team going, and he's the motor under this team, which is led by Steph Curry. And, Ricky, I think when you did the solo podcast, you mentioned that you think the Spurs are the biggest threat to the Warriors. They are. Okay. I so, think they are. So well, let's say we run with that. They go to the Western Conference Finals. Mm-hmm. Do you think that Draymond Green would be the most important factor against the Spurs? Because you look at their their big man in Aldridge and Gasol. Those two guys are not guys who are, I would say, uh, I mean, completely different skill sets than mm-hmm. Draymond Green. A guy that can stretch the floor. A guy that I would say is tougher than than Gasol well, say, and Paul Aldridge. can stretch the floor really well. He just is a, doesn't play defense. Well, and but I would say <laughs> he stretches the floor differently than a Draymond Green does. Because yeah. because quicker he can oh, he's, yeah. he's got more range. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we saw what Draymond could do from three in, in Game Seven. Um, do you think that Draymond would be the X factor in that? In, in a San Antonio series because of the way that he differs from a guy like Aldridge well, and, and Gasol? Honestly, we, we watched uh, this last game on the 29th against the Spurs, and he actually was going on Kawhi, and the way that they were using him uh, to double up on Kawhi completely made him disappear. So, honestly, I don't like. I get that the Spurs are obviously their, their uh, hardest matchup contender, but, like, well, they can think, shut down Kawhi. Do you think that they are the hardest contender? Do you think it, I, Houston or Houston or San Antonio, who would you say? 
the, the biggest problem right now, Houston, is I'm looking at Harden with that wrist. It's clearly not right. He's been struggling the last two games. Um, and if he doesn't rest, he's hurting his own odds for the playoffs. So, look, Houston can get the hottest shooting. They can match the uh, Warriors shot for shot. But in a series, I think the Spurs will keep it close as much as possible. The, the problem is, like, how quickly the Warriors can shut down Kawhi. And if Kawhi gets shut down, he doesn't come back. He He's... I think that's the biggest knock on him, and I think that's where that Draymond matchup matters the most. Well, when KD comes back, do you put Draymond or or, or KD on Kawhi? I put Draymond on Kawhi. And the thing that I was thinking of is it's the X factor in that series would either be Draymond or Durant. Draymond defensively, but you look for Durant, I might look to him offensively because if the Spurs try to do something where they go, hey, you know what, we— I know that Steph Curry has the speed to maybe get around guys, but we're going to try to limit him out of the game. You then can go to Durant and say, hey, you know what? They're trying to shut down Curry. They're limiting him pretty much, which is kind of like shutting the, down the Steph Curry. The retirement home backcourt of the Spurs, really? Shutting well, anybody down? I'm not saying that, but if they get <laughs> like, I look at Kawhi and I look at yeah, like, you if they Kawhi have him, him in yeah. there, then you can They've turn to Durant and say, we're going to you, big guy. It's your time to shine. It's your time to step up because they're doing different things to Curry. So we're saying that the Warriors, that the Spurs are the war- biggest threat mm-hmm. to the Warriors. We say obviously the, series, Rockets, yeah. the Rockets have the, the shooting ability. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jazz are, are, are an all around great team, but probably don't match up with the Warriors just uh, scoring output wise. Yeah, Gobert can create nightmares, but like it's just as a series, I don't know. Are the Warriors your favorite then? Yeah. In, 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 yeah. The, in, the, in the NBA. It's hard to say no. They're they're the hottest team in the NBA right now. They're going to return back one of the best scorers we've ever seen, who, again, probably not enough credit for his defensive efforts out there because Mm -hmm. he has made made them a top 10 defensive team in the NBA, too, while he was there. So, like, across the board, Kevin Durant coming back, it's just hard to ignore that. Even if, like, he doesn't fit into place perfectly, Mm -hmm. this is still a team that is just by far the most dangerous. And you know what's kind of humorous? What we could see in the playoffs is if the Warriors get that extra motivation to say, you know what, let's end this series early so we can get some rest, and then they get maybe like, not saying that like everything would be a sweep, but like five, <laughs> maybe if their longest is like one six-game series, and then we look on the eastern side with how the Cavs are right now, maybe if the Cavs in round two, round three – have to go the extra distance to get to the finals in a team that's struggling coming into the playoffs. So you mean a flip of last year? Yes. Yeah. I mean, Cavs blew through mm-hmm. one, two, and then went to six and three, and then mm-hmm. words and have it go to seven that's, against the that's Thunder. That's a fair point, yeah. Um, final thing, uh, so they're your favorites. Yeah, the no, Warriors. Warriors are my favorite to win it all. Um, yeah. How much does the knee injury worry you about KD? Because it's a, it's a more significant injury than the one that K-Love had, and he hasn't been completely 100% back Not, for the Cavs. It doesn't concern me too much because with him on the court, the Warriors are great. Without him on the court, the Warriors are great. So do you think that KD can be eased back in because the Warriors have been doing so well without him? Yeah. The the first yeah. round series, even though Portland, like I kind of want to think back to the Dane that kind of hit that big shot like a couple years ago. The Portland Trailblazers, who they would play right now, that's what I'm looking at. But anyone that plays that eight spot doesn't necessarily worry me. I, th- I think it's completely up to how much they work him back in. I think a safe way to do it would be, you know, bring Durant in for the first round of the playoffs. He might not only he might not have to play more than 20, mm-hmm. 25 minutes. And I think that's a safe bet because, like Rick, he said, they're already a well-functioning machine right now. Everything's running smooth. We're seeing what they used to do and how they used to dominate. So it, it's not there, – there's no force. There's no rush. It's let him work his game back in, and I, I just don't see anybody else coming close. Final thing I want to mention, and this is, does not have to do with the Warriors, doesn't have to do with the Spurs, Rockets, or anything. Yep. Uh, when I was in Iowa, you guys talked about the eighth seed race. Um, it's still pretty that close. Uh, we, we were, you're pretty much saying Portland right now just because they're in, well, in, yeah, in that spot right now. I just used them because they were there. Yeah, uh, I mean, 8-2 and two in their last 10, 5-game winning streak, but Nurkic just went out. Uh, and, and the Nuggets have been have been sliding off, lost three straight. Um, who is your favorite night, right now to take over that 8 spot? Do you think it, <laughs> Portland stays it, even with Nurkic being out? I think that I, I would go Trailblazers. I just I like their team better, and their backcourt to me is... Phenomenal, but Nurkic was the really the catalyst to turn him around. Yeah. How much do you think that that would knock down their confidence, or do you think that's enough confidence that they build up with him out? Because I think he's pretty much gonna be out for two weeks. I yeah. think they'll be able to outlast the Nuggets, although it does worry me. 
Yeah, I think that they're they're still going to remain up on the Nuggets um, going into the playoffs. Hopefully, he's back healthy and uh, make it interesting. But and I think in that segment too, when we originally talked about it, I thought I said the Mavs. Oh, they haven't looked too good. Well, well, <laughs> we had that discussion. Well, I wasn't here. And, <laughs> they're, uh, they're three, three and seven the last mm-hmm. time. Yeah, I'm, mm-hmm. I wasn't here. And uh, and, and Boogie is going to be in the playoffs. Whoa, Portland's going to fall off. Portland's going to fall off. They're going to lose too much confidence with Nurkic going out. Nuggets haven't been looking good. And Pelicans have been completely on fire. They figured uh, out how to use two bigs. Anthony not Dave, at the same time. Anthony Davis is putting like 26 points up. Draymond's putting up 27. And they're both grabbing like 27 and fucking 10. It's fucking un- phenomenal. They're 7-3. <laughs> and three. Pelicans, book them. They're going to the playoffs. It's going to be fantastic. You do know that they are... What, four and a half games back. Four and a half, and they would almost have to win every they, single they game. Have to win every oh, game. they they need a ton of help, but they got two yeah. games. Against and the, they got two games against the, the 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 Nuggets and a game against Portland. But they also play the Warriors. So that's one game. And the Bulls, I think the Bulls can beat them. Nah, can beat so. them. But we'll it's see. a back to back for the Bulls, so we'll see. Yeah, I don't know about that. I want to. It's a home away. Are, are we overlooking the, the Nuggets? Nuggets? Is He's that, overlooking. Well, the I think Nuggets. I think the Nuggets have just been they've been kind of eh lately. I mean they've, they've been That's too, too 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 slow, and the, the two games against uh, New Orleans will be huge because yeah. I mean if they they also, that may decide the AC. They, 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 they also AC. have. I mean, I'm looking at it. Denver, Denver, two Denver, Golden, Golden State, State back to back, and then and LA, then LA and to Portland back to back. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. Two back to backers. But then again, Anthony Davis <laughs> has won. You, Anthony Davis has won you a game <sighs> before. DeMarcus Cousins has won you a game before, so I mean, you can, you, you can honestly, you can play one of them against LA and rest <laughs> one, of, one of the other ones. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Portland. I'm, I'm gonna, Portland over New Orleans. Fuck it, I'm going bold. New Orleans. Tell us who you think is gonna be the <laughs> A seed in the comments down below. Also, tell us what you think of the Warriors down below. Thank you. Oh shit. Oh, it's just one of our videos scared me a little bit. Don't forget to check out that one, and also don't forget to check out Patreon.com/slash Podcast. But thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.